you're moving to San Antonio and you don't know whether you should buy a pre-owned home or a new home. Like you just don't have a clue and that's okay. That's why you're here. That's why you're watching this channel. And in this video, I'm going to show you some pros and cons of buying a new build home here in San Antonio, but don't don't leave too soon because at the end, I'm going to give you three pro tips that are going to absolutely save you tens of thousands of dollars. So if that's the kind of information you want, stick around because we're getting to it right now. And the first pro obviously is it's a brand new home. Like it is new everything. The toilets are new. Nobody's ever used them at least you hope. And you know, the, the carpet's new if you have carpet or the wood floors are new. And there's nothing more satisfying than sitting in a brand new home and enjoying it, right? Uh, I mean, if you, the refrigerator's new so you can keep it up the way you want to, make sure that you clean it. You don't have to deal with somebody else's mess that lived in the home before you. And not only is everything new, you're able to now build memories in this home because nobody else has been there. You and your family are the first occupants. And I'm going to tell you, there's no better feeling than having a brand new home. And that's great. So if you want a brand new home where you can build your memories and you can, you know, make sure that everything is taken care of, if you're that meticulous person that wants to make sure that things are serviced and that things are cleaned and that things are kept up like they should be, then buying a brand new home is probably the thing for you. Second, you can choose a lot of the things. Well, it depends. Now, there's two different types of new construction home that you can buy. You could either buy something called a spec home, one that is already built and ready for you to move in. And the downside of that is that, yeah, everything's new, but you didn't get to choose the, the finishes. You didn't get to choose the color of the, the tile. You didn't get to choose the color of the cabinets. But honestly, that's going to save you tens of thousands of dollars if you go that route. Now, if you want to build what we call from dirt, meaning from the bottom up, you're going to have the opportunity to pick every single thing. Most homes have options where you can either do a bump out in the bedroom or you can add a closet into here or a third bathroom there or whatever. You can semi custom your home within limits and uh, be able to choose everything. You'll be able to choose the the color of the um, the cabinets, the, the type of countertops you're going to get, the paint color, like everything. So you are going to get to choose the things that you want if you build from the bottom up or from dirt. Uh, and that's a good feeling because you know what? If you don't like dark cabinets, then you don't have to settle for white cabinet or for dark cabinets. You just pick whatever ones you want. But if you buy one that's a spec home that's already built, you may have to settle for whatever the person that designed the home chose. And um, yeah, so those are just some of the things that you get to do whenever you pick a home from or you build a home with a new home builder. Now, if you're buying a pre-owned home, obviously you don't have a choice. It is what it is. You walk in the home and either you love it or you don't. And if you don't, that's okay. But new home builds are a great way to go if you want to pick all the different finishes for your home. And then the third pro is the amenities. Have you seen these neighborhoods that they're putting up nowadays? Like they're just crazy amenities in these neighborhoods. The amuse, or excuse me, they, yeah, amusement parks. The amenity centers look like amusement parks. Like I'm not kidding you. There's water slides. There's splash pads. There's you know swimming pools, lazy rivers. The list goes on and on and on. If you were to buy a pre-owned home, you're lucky if you're able to get a pool in the community because that's just not something that was being done you know 10 20 years ago but in today's market in today's developments there are some of the craziest amenity centers out there and i mean you can even bypass going to sea world or going to six flags fiesta texas because it's going to be in your own neighborhood so the amenity centers are just phenomenal in these new neighborhoods 
Now, that's not the only thing that you get to choose. Obviously, if that neighborhood is not close to amenities outside of the neighborhood, for instance, grocery stores, shopping, uh, you know, maybe hospitals and that kind of stuff, then you get to choose the community that you go to. And here's the thing is most builders are sticking to the same type of community, whether it's five miles up the road or it's in the location that you're at, they're probably going to have the same amenity centers. But uh, there's so many to choose from. Every builder has a different mindset on what they put in those amenities, but I'm going to tell you that most of them are just phenomenal and they're out of this world. But everything's not, uh, you know, rainbows and unicorns. There are some cons to buying a new build home. And the very first one and the most obvious con of buying a new build home is that you're going to pay more. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, that's a different kind of market when you buy a new build home because the builder or the developer, if there's several builders in that community, are going to fix the price range. They're going to say, hey, we're going to develop this area of, of San Antonio and the homes, we're going to sell them between, you know, 500 and 600,000. Are you OK with that? And once you have buy in from all the builders, they're going to start breaking ground. They're going to start building these homes and then they're going to sell them to you for five to six hundred thousand dollars. And that's the initial set. Right. Whenever the market gets better or as the market uh, continues to grow, the prices do creep up. So you've probably seen this sign where it says homes starting in the low 200s. Well, if that community has been there for more than two or three years, there, there's nothing at the $200,000 mark. You're looking at probably 300 and 350,000 two years down the road. But they fixed the prices and they built to that quality of price range. So whatever builder it is, they're gonna stick to those guns and there's gonna be very, very little wiggle room. But again, if you stick to the pro tips or you stick to the very end, I'm going to share three pro tips that can bypass some of that. By the way, my name is Jesse Lopez. I'm the owner of Blue Utopia Realty here in San Antonio, Texas. I'm a real estate broker. I own my own real estate company and I love helping people move here to San Antonio. I served 23 years in the United States Air Force and I know the struggles of moving from one city to the other without having good information. So if that's the kind of information you want, you want to know where to live, play, sleep, eat, and all that good stuff here in San Antonio, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and tap on that bell so you're notified every single time I put out a new video. And uh, so, yeah, that's the cons of the biggest con is pricing, right? You're not going to have very much control. But what you do have control is choosing the community that you're going to live in. So the communities are pretty much fixed in pricing uh, according to the area. So the more amenities, the higher price, the less amenities, the less of a price. So if there's no amenity center, you're probably going to pay a little bit less than somebody has this gigantic water park in the neighborhood. The next con is you're going to be living in a construction zone. It doesn't matter if you're there when the first house is built or you're there when the last house is built. More than likely, you're going to have to deal with things that most people don't have to deal with when they buy a pre-owned home, and that's noise. You know, these construction workers, God bless them, they go out there, they do a hard job, they're out in the heat, they're out in the cold, they're out in the rain, building you your perfect home, but they're going to do it at their convenience, not yours. So if you buy a home and there's still construction around you, buyer beware, you're going to be running into noise. You're going to hear these people playing their music at all hours of the day day and also on the weekends because these guys they want to get paid so they're going to go work on the weekend they're going to be blasting their radios and there's nothing you can do about it who are you going to complain to they're building homes right so that's the other thing and another one is because it is a construction zone there's going to be nails there's going to be screws and there's going to be all kind of things and it just seems like your tires are always going to just <laughs> just attract them right so if you're not into changing your tires and having nails and screws in your in your in your tires of your car or your truck then maybe construct or a uh, new built home is not the way to go because it is going to be a construction zone another thing about being a construction zone is that there's third-party vendors that 
actually target new build communities. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you're buying a home in a new construction, uh, new construction home, and once you close, this is public information. Like people know you just bought a home. So are you going to have the water softener guy come out? You're going to have the alarm guy come out. You're going to have the, well, I should say guys, because there's going to be multiple companies targeting you. You're going to have the solar panel guy. You're going to have the reverse osmosis water guy. You're going to have all kinds of people soliciting you in order to get your business. And my advice to you is don't go with them because you don't even know who they are. You're just moving in. If you hire a professional realtor like myself, we can guide you to get better service at better prices. Don't just go with the person that comes and knocks on your door because that's going to cost you some money. And the third con of buying a new built home is the home is probably going to cost you more. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you're picking the finishes and you could get a little crazy. So I'll tell you a story. I had a client that was buying a home and I think it started at about $600,000. Well, when you're buying a home from dirt, right, from the bottom up, which which her and her husband were, uh, you get to go to something that, that's called the, um, not the amenity center, the uh, it's a showroom, right? So you get to go to the showroom. You get to pick out whatever finishes you want. Now, they're going to give you a range. They're going to say this is the level that you can pick. It's included in the price. But if you want something a little bit nicer, it's going to cost you more. And, of course, who doesn't get carried away? You look at something that's just normal every day, and then it's next to something that looks really beautiful. That's called marketing. They're going to You're going to look at that beautiful piece, and you're going to be like, Hey, what's $10,000 more? And that it's a vicious cycle. Every time you go back to the design center, that's what it's called. Every time you go back to the design center, you're going to be attracted by another shiny object and it's going to cost you more money. So my clients started off at a 600, I think maybe $650,000. By the time everything was said and done, they were out the door paying $800,000 for this home. And that's in a matter of six months. Oh, no, we want lights here. Oh, can you take those lights off of there and do this? There's something called the change order, and builders are happy to do it for you because there's a price attached to them. So, And another way that a home could cost you a little bit more than you anticipated is if you're building from dirt, uh, there's going to be a big span, right, like maybe six to eight months of build time. Well, we don't know what the market is doing in those six to eight months. For instance, a lot of people that were buying new build homes in the beginning when COVID happened, when the rates were about two, three, and 4%, and some of these lasted over a year to get built because the demand was so high, and by the time they actually financed it, the rates were up at five and 6%. So whenever somebody promises you a rate, you gotta see the numbers because unless it's on paper, it's not true. And the way rates work is that they cannot lock that rate. I mean, they could, but they're going to charge you. But typically, they do not lock rates until about 30 days before you close. So that's when you're going to really be able to tell what your interest rate is going to be. Now, there's a lot of talk about interest rates. As you've known, people are looking at the Fed going, hey, are you going to lower interest rates? Uh, Inflation's going crazy. And there are some ways to mitigate that. But if you're going to build a home... We don't know what next year looks like. We don't know what six months down the road looks like. So that's just something that you're going to have to tuck in the back of your head and make sure that you're aware of because the difference between one rate to the other could be hundreds of dollars on your mortgage. Now, I told you I was going to give you some pro tips, right? I'm glad that you're still here. I'm glad that you're listening to this video because if you're buying a new built home, then I'd love to help you. My phone number's down here. Give me a call. Let's jump on a call. There's a QR code right here that you can, you know, stop your your TV, pause it, get your phone out, snap that QR code. Let's book a call so we can discuss the things that you and your family need 
when you're moving here to San Antonio. I'm your advocate. I'm your representation. I am your boots on the ground that'll tell you everything that you need to know about the area and the home that you're looking for. Like, I don't hold back, right? Like, I'm going to give it to you straight. So if that's what you want and you're looking to move here, it doesn't matter if you're moving here in 30 days or in three years. I'm actually helping people that are moving here in two years, but they're going to come visit. We're going to look at homes and we're going to look at neighborhoods so they know exactly what they're getting into when they eventually move. So if that's something you want, again, give me a call, uh, book a book a call right here so we can get to it, right, and get you s straight straight away uh, what you need. So, all right, pro tips. So the first pro tip that I have is that you have to hire a realtor. Now, God bless these salespeople. Like I'm not a, I don't consider myself a salesman, but there are so many sneaky people out there, and realtors don't have the best reputations right like they are pure salesmen to the bone right like they don't care about you they don't care about what you need they care about getting paid and i'm not like that like i said i served uh i retired from the air force you know i, I have income streams i just love doing this because one i love my city and two i love people uh i love helping them relocate because i did it so many times in my 23 years of service but you have to hire a realtor and don't just hire any realtor interview them find out what they're about find out what motivates them find out what kind of service they provide because those realtors are the ones that are going to link you between the new home builder and you and here's how we are absolutely vital to that process now, if you walk into a new build community and you do not have a realtor representing you, the salesperson is going to be ecstatic. They're going to be like, yes, we're going to sell a house and we're going to sell it at full price. Now, I know I told you earlier in the video that prices are fixed and they are somewhat, but my job is to negotiate. This is what I do. So if I bring somebody in there, I already have a leg up because they know I'm going to expect them to negotiate. Now, how much am I going to save you? It's, it could be 10000 It could be 30000 I literally was under contract to buy a home last year, and I went from getting $15,000 from the builder in price reduction and in concessions all the way to 35000 now, I didn't close the deal because it wasn't the right location. My wife and I didn't really love it, so we didn't buy it. But that's the power of having a realtor. We are expert negotiators. So we will negotiate prices, we'll negotiate concessions, and all that good stuff. So if you're looking to buy a new home, do not go into that community without a realtor. Because once you get in there, it's, it's impossible honestly, to track back and go, hey, oh, I have a realtor. They're going to say, sorry, you already came in here, you registered, basically, you're on your own. And good luck trying to negotiate because they don't care. They just want to sell you a home and make sure that you don't, you know, cost them any money. Now, is it going to cost you any money to have a realtor? Zero. The sellers in Texas pay for our commissions. So, it not it doesn't cost you anything and it's absolutely not going to affect the price of the home because you have a representation right or you have a realtor representing you that commission actually comes from a marketing budget that the builder has already set aside it does not have anything to do with the price of the home so don't worry about it like if you're wanting to buy a new build home find an aggressive great realtor that's going to represent you and of course you know I'm always available, so give me a call. Now, the second pro tip, I'm going to take you back to when I was under contract. And a lot of people have this misconception and they think, well, it's a new home. I don't need an inspection. And nothing could be further from the truth. Like, you absolutely need an inspection. And here's why. People build homes. They're not built by robots. They're not built by, you know, infallible objects. They're built by human beings. Now, have you ever had a bad day? You go to work, have a bad day, and do a subpar job? We all have, right? And construction is no different. Like some of these construction workers will literally throw things down the drain pipes just because they're mad at the construction supervisor for yelling at them. 
or for telling them that they were late and, you know, not treating them well, for not saying hi. Well, whatever the reason, they are human, they do have emotions, and sometimes those emotions get the best of them, and they look out to get over on the, on the uh, builder, the company, but it really affects you. So when I, bought, when I was under contract to buy my house, I get a full inspection because I know that people build homes. And not only do did I get the home inspected, which was the typical stuff, but I got something called the sewer scope. And when the inspector put the camera down the sewer pipes to make sure there was nothing in them that wasn't supposed to be there, lo and behold, there was cement in them. There was two showers that had cement clogging up the showers. Now, had I not spent the $175, $200 for that sewer scope, that inspection, I would have definitely had problems with the home after I moved in. Fortunately, like I said, I'm a realtor. I know how this game is played. I got the inspection. I told the builder, I said, hey, we're not moving forward until you fix this. And in about a week, all the cement was gone. They did another inspection. They proved that there was no cement in there. And then we moved forward. So it's very, very important that you don't skip out on the inspection, even though it's brand new built. I can tell you stories upon stories where people passed on the inspection later to move in and find out that the home was not to specification. So spend the money. It's worth it. Get a home inspection. And then my last pro tip, this is my most favorite because there's a saying, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. So when you go to a new build community, these builders are going to try to entice you to build their, or to buy their product. And the way they're going to do that is they're going to offer you incentives. Now, these incentives are tied to something. They want you to do something. And that thing is, is they want you to use their lender. And sometimes you could buy a brand new home with zero money out of pocket. Like they will cover closing costs. They'll cover all kinds of concessions. And it is possible to do it. However, it's tied to you using their, you using their lender. And uh, they're basically, they're saying, hey, look, uh, there's a big company that we know. It's called, it sounds like Zillow. Uh, they own the mortgage company. They own the, the home and they want, you know, they own the title company. They, they monopolize the process and they want to control every aspect. So that's what these builders do. Now, they're going to give you incentives, but... It's really that little shell game. Do you remember that shell game on The Price is Right when Bob Barker would put a ball underneath these three coconut shells and then he'd move it around and say, okay, guess where it's at, right? While you're fixated on certain things, they're moving numbers around, right? I had a client who had a perfect credit score, like an 850 pristine, and they offered him concessions if they use if he used their builder, uh, excuse me, their lender, and after he asked for what's called a loan estimate, it was something that's required, you know, that the lender is required to give you after you apply for a mortgage. After they gave it to him, he noticed or we noticed because we reviewed it and that the concessions they were giving him, they were just charging him further on down the lineup, right, of all the costs. So in essence, they weren't giving him anything. They were playing the shell game. Now, there are times when using their lender is going to benefit you and myself or any of the lenders I work with will tell you if that's a good deal. But you always have to ask for the numbers because numbers don't lie. If you're buying a new built home and they're offering you $15,000 in concessions, if you hire me, we'll bump that up. We'll try to get you more. Uh, but know that when it's all said and done, you need to get that loan estimate so you can see what it's really going to cost you. Now, sometimes I've had instances where they offered a certain concession and their lender was taking it back. So we said, hey, look, we're not going to go forward unless we can use our lender that doesn't charge these things. So it's every situation is specific to that situation. So 
there's no there's no two purchases that are ever going to look the same so the best thing to do is one get that representation get a realtor that's going to help you in the process and make sure that they're knowledgeable on you know if you're using a va home loan an fha a conventional make sure that they know their stuff because they're the ones that are going to be helping you look at the numbers and kind of guiding you where you need to go so yeah those are the three pro tips. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you are looking for more information about moving to San Antonio, there's some more videos here. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, share this with somebody that's moving to San Antonio. I'd love to help them. And again, welcome to San Antonio. I can't wait to meet you and uh, we'll see you on the next video.